Well, hello again and welcome back to our mini-series looking at the letter Paul wrote to the church in Philippi and looking for reasons for the joy which is so evident throughout the whole letter, despite his circumstances. Now, Paul has a lot of advice and wisdom to share with his friends in Philippi on how to live a fulfilling, a full Christian life. And I'm just going to pick out two of those strands of wisdom uh, to draw your attention to today. The first one is really essential. It's about how it all begins. Maybe you already know that before Jesus interrupted Paul on his journey to Damascus, Paul was actually already a very religious man. He'd been born into the right ethnic group. He'd spent his life studying and teaching the law of Moses. And he could even go on to claim that he'd kept every single tiny rule in the whole huge, enormous book of rules, which were part and parcel of religious life in those times. For Paul, those three things were essential for a human being to be in a right relationship with God. But as he explains in chapter three, I thought things like that were really something great, but now I consider them to be nothing because of Christ. Even more, I consider everything to be nothing compared to knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. To know him is worth much more than anything else. Being right does not come from obeying the law. It comes because I believe in Christ. It comes from God because of faith. There's such freedom in knowing that and such joy in starting to grapple with the immensity of God's love that he would send his son and the immensity of the love of Jesus that he would agree to come in order that we may have life. The amazing, life-giving, joy-bringing truth is that God has done it all for us through Jesus. Now maybe that's new to you, or maybe you already knew that, but as this book I've been reading recently points out, sometimes as Christians we can start off knowing that, but then we can start to tie ourselves up in knots by thinking we have to do things to earn God's approval. As Philip Yancey says, there's nothing we can do to make God love us more. There's nothing we can do to make God love us less. Through Jesus, we are sons and daughters. We're not the hired hand. Let's not drift back into how Paul was before he met Jesus, trying to do things to win God's approval. Sure, as Paul points out, we need to let our love and appreciation for what God has done for us spur us on to doing things. But it's not so we can win love. It's a bit like with my daughter. I invest time in her and I care for her because I love her. I don't do those things in order to win her love. Second thing I'd like to draw your attention to is how Paul advises we deal with one joy killer, anxiety. Anxiety is a robber of joy. Undoubtedly, the Christians in Philippi had lots of things to be concerned about, as do we, particularly at the moment. And maybe like me, you found yourself feeling in the months leading up to this anxiety at various stages. I can remember being in the supermarket with empty shelves, wondering how I was actually going to feed us. It's been an anxious time. But Paul reminds us of the riches and the joy there is in knowing that we have access to God at any time through prayer. Listen to what he says. Don't worry about anything. Easier said than done sometimes, isn't it? But don't worry about anything. No matter what happens, tell God about everything. Ask and pray and give thanks to him. 
God's peace can never be completely understood, but then God's peace will watch over your hearts and your minds. He will do this because you belong to Christ Jesus. Those are fantastic truths. Notice there that God's peace isn't a soft, fluffy feeling. God's peace is strong. It's there to guard our hearts and our minds. And my prayer for you today, for all of us today, is, as, is that as we bring our concerns to God in prayer, we will know his peace, his strong peace, guarding our minds and our hearts and keeping our joy. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again next time.